Do 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 It is what it is. It's fine. It'll be charming the way we are. Couldn't do it at the same time. Welcome back to the stars made me do it. We are hosting at very unusual times. The stars the are right out. Now. The stars, stars are out for, are both, out of for us, both of us. Which is quite a it's feat. midnight for me. 6 a.m. for me. Because guys, we tried we really to hard. This. We tried really hard. We literally like okay, if you're watching the video of this, you notice the witch hats because mm-hmm. Harry Potter. Harry mm-hmm. fucking Potter. This is happening today. I'm wearing a Gryffindor sweater. <laughs> Tara had a Hogwarts sweater on. We tried recording during normal human hours and my internet is like, no. So here we are when all the Frenchies are sleeping and not using the Wi-Fi in, yeah. the, in the Frenchie building. So we figured when will the Frenchies not be using the Wi-Fi? Not right now. 6 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> so we want to let you know <laughs> we really tried to record the best harry potter episode ever we tried for like two hours and my wi-fi was just like no you're too magical and it's interfering with the internet so here we are um for those After of you many tries and yeah. and taping a uh, a crystal to the wi-fi box i have taped a crystal to the wi-fi in the hopes that it will improve your connection. Um, at least it, you know, I feel like I did something, you know. <laughs> but it seems to be working. It's not on woods. So oh, my gosh. It. I just have to share again, though, that we, okay, we came dressed for the occasion. And also, for those that can't see, I have set out my, my Harry Potter section of my bookshelf with special guest of the Hogwarts apothecary bottle. And I just feel like the world needs to see that because it's so it's, fun. It's so fun. And then I also came armed and ready with some coffee since it's 6 freaking a.m. And we're starting this at 6 a.m., meaning I've been awake for 30 minutes now. <laughs> and and I, I started dozing around 10 p.m. and woke up at 11.45. <laughs> and that's like just the worst time to take a nap. <laughs> so. It's midnight now and I'm ready to talk about Harry Potter. Oh my god. I have my coffee in my I possibly swear I'm up to no good. Nice. Mischief meowaged mug. <laughs> and then here's one shout out to cousin Justin for our aquamenti. Yay, cousin Justin and here and cousin Sabrina who gave us awesome stars made me do it mugs. Yeah, so for Christmas, thanks, fam. You the best, and um, Harry Potter, guys, guys. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Kate, for choosing the Harry Potter analysis because we wanted to do this for so long, and mm-hmm. there are so many. There's so many Harry Potter characters, so we will not be doing them all because we will not be. We how could we possibly? We are going to break not, it down. Not all at once, anyway. Yes. Voila. Because it would be like an endless episode if we tried to do all of them at once. So we are going to be going over Harry Potter, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, and he who must not be named. Voldemort, Voldemort. <laughs> oh, Voldemort. Voldemort, Voldemort. <laughs> Um, um, and then we'll have a Patreon episode that's going to be released at the same time as this episode um, with a few more Harry Potter characters coming out this week. Yes. Um, so, and yeah. we'll have more in the future because we love, we love Harry Potter. And mm-hmm. we're going to give a, a disclaimer of mm. um, all of the, I don't know, what we say, the recent bullshit that came out. Like, I, bullshit isn't the right word. Like, disturbing. Nonsense. Nonsense. I don't know. <laughs> um, 
we know that JK viewed some or I don't know, spoke some things that was not okay for the trans community. So everyone is welcome. Not, not agreed upon me, by the stars yeah. made me do it. Yeah. 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 So we just want to say that for this, we are separating the author from her work because we, I mean, Harry Potter is such a huge part of our childhood and it was just such a, a such a sad thing to hear, but we, we don't want to lose the magic of Harry Potter, but for this, we're just mm-hmm. taking her out of the equation and everybody's welcome here. And we do not share yeah. those views. And I mean, she'll probably be mentioned yeah, in the episode, but I mean... We wanted to do a Harry Potter analysis as like since we started yeah since we started the podcast this. <laughs> and and that's when all of that went down and we were like let's not kick it off with yeah. that since it's like such a it's so uh, fresh right now. I don't know what the word is but we were like let's let's stay away from that yeah so it's been a while it's still, still not, not okay, okay. thoughts yeah. on it but. But we love Harry Potter and we know so many people love Harry Potter. Potter. And so, Mm -hmm. yes, we are separating it. The um, the only thing that we um, we will start with is just to let is that she is a a Leo who gave her main character the same birthday as her. So there you go. That's there we go. (laughs) Very Very Leo Leo. thing to do. Very Leo indeed. Very Leo indeed. Um, Um, Yeah. Which is July 31st. Yes. So that's Harry Potter. Harry Potter's birthday. Uh, we did. We did mention um, part one of recording this that we had um, like Harry Potter. Like a, a huge reason why it's such a big deal for us. I know, like any other millennial is going to say the same thing, but um, you know, huge part of our childhood. But it always like kind of coincided with the week that Tara was visiting me in Maryland, that the Harry Potter books would come out, and so mm-hmm. we had one summer where they like all it was like all the cousins were visiting me and the harry potter books came out and Mm -hmm. many of them and we got the books we were reading them we all went we each got a copy yep Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um and then you guys were like wait we're gonna be wasting our weekend not wasting we're gonna be spending our weekend our week in maryland reading where we should be hanging out together so maybe we should put the books down and finish them after this week is over (laughs) i was like I am not okay with that decision. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, but I was eventually convinced. You were a speed reader and you still are. You can read so fast and I could never keep up with how fast you were able to read. And I knew like it it would take me. And also I don't like to like plow through books. I know. I want to enjoy them. Yeah. And I know you just like, you need to find out what's going to happen, which I get that too. But um. Whereas it would have taken me like a week to read through it and like absorb it. Yeah. Um, you you could do it in a day and be like, mm. I got to know what's going to happen. And that was when the sixth one came out, which I really liked the sixth book actually. But um, yeah. Yeah. And anyway, by the time we were going home, usually it was so sad. It was so we sad. We were going to be we leaving each other. We would drop you off in, in New York. I'd be like, can we just spend another week together? And this mm-hmm. time I was like, bye. And then I got the book out in the car. <laughs> I like get yeah. sick reading in the car too. And I was like, it is worth the nausea. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> so we, not only are we connected because it, it's just our generation, but that was also a thing that the one time a year we got to spend multiple days together. That was, uh, mm-hmm. that was always a thing, but yeah. anyways, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. I'm so July excited to talk 31st. about this. I'm so excited. It's it's worth being awake early. I'm so excited. Okay. It's been a long time coming. It has been. Okay. So he's a Leo, according to J.K. Mm-hmm. Rowling, the Leo mm-hmm. who gave the Leo character her own birthday. Would I do Side that? Side note. Would I do that? I don't know that I would do that. <laughs> I don't think you would. Maybe you would. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might be like a fiery thing to do. Mm. Um a quick little side note here me and you figured out that harry potter was likely conceived on halloween and like nobody ever talks about that and i think that's interesting oh because nine months before 731 is october 31 Ooh, and that's like a that's like a full story of like 
that's like when parents were killed right and his parents were killed on halloween yes yeah. i just got goosebumps yes. and these aren't real people but i'm feeling connected <laughs> Like, I wonder if she connected that, that, like, he was conceived on Halloween and his parents were killed. I don't know if it was the, fu- I think it was, like, not the, not. No, he was, Halloween, like, a year and Halloween, a, yeah. A year and a half, yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, no, I don't, I feel like no one has ever pointed that out. And that was, like, a thing that me and you kind of discovered. Yeah, I'm sure people have, but, mm-hmm. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, man. Well, as a James Lilly fan, well done. Halloween, baby. Mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So on a website, someone had completely done Harry Potter's birth chart. And they they gave him the birth time 5 p.m. The website, the reference is uh, hp-lexicon.org. And... Um, if he were born at 5 p.m., that would make him a triple Leo. I mean, a triple fire sign. Leo sun, ascending Sagittarius, and his moon in Aries. No. Did I say that completely wrong? No, I just disagree with that completely. <laughs> <laughs> like moon in Aries, Aries and moon, moon in Aries. <laughs> no. I'm, no, I'm just very against that. I like... Mm. Come on, a triple fire sign? Like, okay, mm. first of all, my amazing roommate Jerry, who we interviewed for Leo season, is a triple fire sign. And dear God, is she in the best way possible? Like, she's a Leo mm-hmm. with maybe it's the opposite. I think she's Aries rising with a Sagittarius moon. Mm-hmm. And she is a ball of joy and warmth. And uh, no offense, HP, but no. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and also, like, yeah. if you're a Sagittarius rising, like, mm-hmm. and you grow up in that environment, there's no way you're not becoming like, like an angry, rebellious, like I'm piecing the fuck out of here, dude. Like, mm-hmm. a triple fire sign would not, I would not stay living in a closet under the stairs for twelve years of their life, like, and just. And with the Aries moon, I think he would have been <sighs> pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah enraged mm-hmm. um no way there's yeah. no way no i mean i really think he's got cancer going on for sure mm, i agree i don't yeah. know if like maybe he's a leo with a cancer moon um because i mean he does have that like people notice him thing about him you know Mm -hmm. and we have talked about like the quiet leos or you know but maybe like maybe the ones not needing the center of attention but getting it anyways or whatever that is but i would almost attribute that more to like a leo midheaven than a leo sun but i think harry potter's got to have cancer going on because it's like (laughs) he's such he had such an emotional wreck through so many of these like things and not to say that cancers have to be emotional wrecks but to not only be very emotional and to be very he's very cardinal at the same time like you know he's mm-hmm. he's not a fixed sign in in a lot of situations so he a little bit but i feel like he's you know we're going to go figure this out on our own let's go do this like you know very initiating but at the mm-hmm. same time, you know, I have all these problems and I don't want to say anything to my friends because I'm being moody and they're asking me what's wrong and they don't even care. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm feeling cranky and pubescent today and I don't know why. I'm going to take, gonna it, take out it out on people, people I like. I like. <laughs> Potter Papa Pals. We should just base this off of Potter Papa Pals. Yeah, right. That was, a, he was a cancer. <laughs> oh my God. Like, and, you know, or... I, I just really I think, think there's cancer going on. I'm okay with him being a Leo, a, a son, son in Leo, sure. but not an ascending Sagittarius, which no. I mean, that's not, we don't know when his birth time is, but um, I don't think ascending Sagittarius and I don't think an Aries moon. No, no, um, there's no way he's an Aries moon. There's no way. I mean, he, the thing about it is like, he gets angry 
and pissed mm-hmm. off at things, but not like an Aries moon would, like a Cancer moon mm-hmm. would. He gets pissed off when it's like, you know, you know, I thought you were treat like, you know, he sees Dumbledore as like a, you know, a, a family figure, like basically, you know, and and when he's not mm-hmm. included in things and when he's like being treated like he doesn't exist, like that's what's pissing him off, you know, when his friends mm-hmm. aren't like including him in the group or he doesn't feel like they're including him in the group, not necessarily that they're not, but that he feels like they're not that's when Mm -hmm. he gets really, you know, but, but he's also totally capable of like being a a leader, you know, and Mm -hmm. to have that Cardinal moon as a leader and also to have, to have such empathy. Like he's a very, like he, for all the shit that he went through, like, you know, he, he definitely uses like, those are, I'm not trying to just say, Oh, he's a, is a crybaby, So he is a cancer moon. Like he has all the good qualities of, of cancer moon too, you know, where like, he he's I don't yeah. think he's even so much of a crybaby I mean I think he gets like emotional sometimes but I don't think he's a crybaby I think no. the cancer moon is almost more like um how family is so important to him but yeah. I know it's like because he didn't have it but he really like he envies that that Ron has it and like yeah. it's so important that's what he's to him seeking that he find yeah family and cancers are super family oriented yeah 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 um, um, yeah, so we're just feeling there's got to be some some water in there, and I'm feeling cancer. Yeah, I wouldn't. He could he could maybe have like a so like he could have some. Well, that Leo would be the fire, but you know because he does mm-hmm. get sassy like in a in a fiery yeah, way sure. sometimes. Yeah, he's he's great. very sassy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I <laughs> love the. Um, Oh my God, this, you, I'm just thinking how much of a Leo moment this is. The one it didn't, wasn't in the movies. It was in the books where, um, that with, with Snape, you know, I know where, exactly what you're talking about in the sixth book. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or <laughs> what, what's the line? Um, oh my uh, gosh. don't, he says some, something to Snape and Snape corrects him and says the same thing, but adds like, you should have called me, sir. Mm-hmm. On the end. Like, you don't like, have to don't call me, blah, blah, sir, blah, blah, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Harry says, you don't have to call me, sir. Uh, as the things they leave out of the movies, it's like, why would you leave that out? That's like oh my God. such good material. So good. I know. Such a good line. Oh, I, I know. I was trying to like coming up on like talking about Ron in a minute. Like I was trying to separate like in my brain, the books from the movies. Cause I'm like, there's a difference. Mm-hmm. There's a difference. But anyways, before oh, yeah. we, before we continue, Daniel Radcliffe. Mm-hmm is a leo sun aries moon Mm -hmm. so So interesting interesting yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i love that you know i love that daniel radcliffe is a leo with an aries moon um because i feel like both you know like we said harry potter the character himself wouldn't have an aries moon but Mm -hmm. aries moon cancer moon both like you know different ways of showing emotion, both cardinal, you know, so having that, um, I think it's relatable, you know, to, to play a character like that. Mm -hmm. And that, that Leo vibes where I would say Daniel Radcliffe is a good example of a actual Harry Potter type Leo, where it's not like he's in, you know, it's not like he's like, look at me, look at me, look at me all the time. I don't get that vibe from him, at least from, you know, the, Mm -hmm. whatever I read on the interwebs about like, (laughs) So I think that 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 works for Harry Potter being a Leo, but with them cancer vibes. Yeah. 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 I'm just looking at the other planets in his chart, but um, Ooh, Venus and Gemini. I don't think so. No, no. He's very he it's, wouldn't have I mean, immutably. No, his Mercury is in cancer. Mm. Oh, I wonder, do we think that he has like a like thinking and speaking in the same way i don't know Mm. debatable yeah we can come back to that we'll come back to it all right so ron let's talk about ron Ron weasley ron 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 weasley (laughs) (laughs) Uh, okay so ron's birthday is march 1st 1980 making him a pisces with a Virgo moon. Um, we don't know his birth time, but someone speculated. Someone speculated a cancer ascendant. This I'm more okay with than, yeah. <laughs> than with uh, what Harry was 
what Harry um, was bringing to the books. Yeah, bringing. Yeah, I. You know what I do like um, Pisces being the um, the psychic sign. Mm-hmm. Ron, it was like revealed he has all. It, if you don't pay attention, you don't notice it. But he says a lot of things that then happen, mm-hmm. or or he says a lot of things in the books where it's like he couldn't have known that and he was just like joking about it but it was it, they say like Ron's the psychic character in the book without realizing it where he said um in the second one he said oh well this uh Tom Riddle should have killed Moaning Myrtle and done us all a favor before oh, they knew like the whole thing oh. that happened and he did <laughs> that oh, actually happened I just got so, goosebumps yeah, it was... <laughs> oh but yeah but Ron does say a lot of things that end up happening um and that was done on purpose. So I don't oh, know. I if, didn't uh, know that. If that was done intentionally, but yeah, yeah, I, I read that. And then I, I noticed it when rereading the books um, that it's true. That does happen. Interesting. Oh, yeah, because you're reading so, them with Penelope. Yeah. We're, <clears throat> so uh, Hagrid just got taken away and says, <gasps> if anyone's looking for some information, just follow the spiders. And, uh, oh, yeah. my God. Is she freaking out? It's good. Um, she's convinced that it's Hagrid who opens the Chamber of Secrets. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it wasn't him. I mean, I didn't say that to her, but <laughs> at this point in time, she's like, it's Hagrid. It's totally Hagrid. <laughs> Penelope's like she such likes a, him. She's and such knows a cool kid. Bad, but, like yeah. you were telling me funny. how she just wants to find out, like she's been wanting to know since the beginning of the series, what Hagrid's deal is. And I was like, yeah, what a freaking cool expelled. kid because I because was not focused on Hagrid when I was reading those books. No, like not at all. that was not a concern of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I like Hagrid, but yeah. I definitely wasn't focusing on Hagrid and why was he expelled? They did. They mention it in the first book that he was expelled, but yeah, I, I think it's so cool. What sticks with certain brains, you know? And like, yeah. I feel like that's such a Gemini moon thing too. Like, I feel like Guillaume <sighs> would be like, I want to know this detail because this doesn't fit in mm-hmm. my logical sense of, you know, but why, why would they say that if it wasn't important type of thing? And I'm like, yeah. moving on. He was expelled. What's <laughs> Harry doing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wrong. Yeah. I like that psychic thing. I didn't notice it before. This is exciting. Mm-hmm. I have I have the books behind me. I have like the this is what the second, third, and fourth uh, illustrated ones, nice. and they're in French. And that was like my mm-hmm. gateway book of French. It's like the first book that I ever read in French mm-hmm. was Harry Potter. And so I'm like I haven't read all of them, the, all the illustrated ones yet. So now I'm like I'm gonna be on a whole spree because I'm so excited about this, yeah. <laughs> a rereading spree. Um, yes, but. Like the Pisces thing at first, when I read that, I was like, no. And then I was thinking about it. and It's like, he's pretty go with the flow. I mean, and also like, okay, one thing that needs to be mentioned, which I know every Harry Potter fan listening agrees with and knows it's like book Ron versus movie Ron. Like they just made him the dopey uh, sidekick character. Mm -hmm. who's like comic relief where it's like Mm -hmm. yes he has those moments in the book but he's like a a huge part you know and he's intelligent too very intelligent so many of his lines are given to Hermione in the movie where it's like stuff that like he like Harry isn't like aware of certain things in the wizarding world because he wasn't in it his whole life and so Ron will like explain things to him yeah and in the movies it's, it's like Hermione like explains what a parcel tongue is and all that it's like how do you know that Hermione? yeah why do you know like, that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but ron explains it in the yeah. book and like there's so many moments like that where they gave ron's lines to hermione in the movies to i mean like hermione's smart we all know that you didn't have to give ron's yeah intelligence to her too yes yes because so. they kind of like i don't know like stereotypes the character not like stereotype the characters but you know cast yeah. type like you know exaggerated i guess yeah i don't know or he is dopey and has his like mm-hmm. you know that one over my head moments but yeah he is smart mm-hmm. and um and he's a lot braver in mm-hmm. the books than mm-hmm. i mean wasn't it like his because you know he like at the end like went down right to the the chamber to get the the fang like i mean mm-hmm. and then like in the movies they played it up as like that's brilliant ron <sighs> which like it was but mm-hmm. he's had those moments <laughs> you know throughout the books too yeah. um mm-hmm. so let's see moon and virgo 
I'm trying to think if I, if I didn't like, not just if I agree with this or not. Um, oh, 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 this would be a cool moment to bring this up. We did a poll on Instagram. <laughs> and I'd love to know, um, just to give some sort of a overview of what people said. Okay. So I, I asked, um, which of the Harry Potter trio do people relate to the most? Mm-hmm. And we, the most was Hermione. Um, but we had equal amounts, Harry and Ron, and one person said none. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know this. I'm pretty sure it was cousin Justin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then for what elemental vibes do you get from Harry? Uh, most people said fire. So, okay. The okay. second, the second most one that people said was air. And then <laughs> there was a couple people who said earth. And then the three people who said water were me, you, and Kim. And when he answered water, I was How like, how do you know? Yes. How do you know who, who said what? Does it say, does it, does it tell you who's voting what? Yes. Oh, yeah. I well, mean, I'm not g- people. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't know that. I didn't know it tells you. <laughs> I don't want to like make people not vote in the polls, but yeah, I can see. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've never done an Instagram poll. So I know I'm like, we put uh, this up funny. on Instagram, meaning Sierra took over and did it all. Mm. My apologies. Um, and then for uh, which element do you get from Ron? The majority was air and then water mm. and then fire, mm. then earth. So, so that kind of fits. And then real quick, before I forget, um, Hermione, um, most people guessed Earth, but it was really close to air. So we'll keep Mm -hmm. that in our pockets for later. And we'll also keep in our pockets for later the question that I asked of the very controversial, the very controversial question of Harry and Hermione or Ron and Hermione. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. (laughs) Okay. Um, so the people did agree that Ron came off as perhaps watery. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but again, I don't get Virgo Moon from him. No, because um, he would have his would shit together maybe, more. <laughs> maybe even like a like a Fire Moon, like Ron could. Mm, I don't know. I think he's got some fieriness to him. I was thinking Aries Moon for Ron, like yeah, because he doesn't like. Um, he can be quick tempered you know Come on out. oh yeah Come on. i have a kit cat next to me <laughs> yes he's coming yes yes okay he's behind the computer though um i could see the aries moon because he has the short temper and mm-hmm. but then it's like but then he can use that to propel him forward mm-hmm. i don't know i could see some fieriness there but i, I would be okay with him being a pisces um, we just would like to have the the assistant say hello for those who are watching. The floof. The floof is here. He hello, was like, floof. why are you awake so early? <laughs> His mouth just moved and it looked like he went, mom. <laughs> I totally have a guest on voice like in English and in French. Yeah. And my favorite thing for him to do in his English voice is go, dad dad <laughs> are you gonna play with me dad <laughs> oh, okay mm-hmm. so are we we are feeling like I don't know I almost like it's hard in a way because I'm I'm trying to am I trying to just make Pisces fit or would I get to Pisces on my own with Ron mm, I'm okay with him as a Pisces yeah do we yeah. have that creativity that we see um although i mean it's creative in different ways because i know i know some places guys that it's not like i'm an arts and crafts person but i have my own version of creativity yeah creative ideas i think when they like needed to like be uh i can't think of the word um resourceful yeah perhaps um the only virgo moon thing i could see is like the the chess situation i feel like a virgo moon would be good at chess oh yeah you know yeah, but a Virgo moon would also probably that. be they better. They never at really homework. go back to that. Yeah, after like the first one, it's yeah. like he's really good at chess. Moving we'll on. leave that there. Yeah, <laughs> he, he played that really big, literally chess game, and yeah, moving on. Yeah, <laughs> we got enough of the chess all in one. It was big enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Let's. I feel yeah. like we'll need to do an overview at the end. 
So let's yeah. move on to Rupert Grint. Rupert Grint. Oh my God. I didn't look at this thoroughly before. Fellow Cat Moon. <laughs> I have my. Okay, Virgo Sun. I love cat how moon. you're so in tune with the Cat Moons. And oh, then you it's come across thing. other Cat Moons. You're like, oh, Cat Moon. <laughs> I know that you two have been through a lot emotionally. <laughs> But he's a Virgo son, so he's probably kind of in tune with with it, you know? Yeah, he's got the earth and earth going on. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah, I um, I think, like we said in our Virgo episode, Virgo guys elude me a little bit because I just don't know many of them. Mm. Um, but like the ones that we do know celebrity-wise, we like. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know that I can, I, I don't know enough about Virgo guys, let's say. But I don't know enough about Rupert Grint. Yeah. Yeah. I just know I know that thing he did the with the um the ice cream truck. What he was like that? got an ice cream he got an ice cream truck and he just like drove around and gave out free ice cream when he was like young and was like, I have the money to do this and I'm gonna do it. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, he's I funny. Love that. Okay. I also love that yeah. he's like just thinking cat moon thing too like he he's the he's the oldest of them and maybe this has nothing to do with cat moon but it's like we need you to get your driver's license to film this second movie even though you're too young for it is that okay and i could just be like i gotta do what i gotta do you know i mean if that's what has to be done like i'll I'll i would think also like a a 12 year old boy is gonna be like heck yes i'm gonna do this and get my driver's license because like of course yeah Um, oh my god yeah. Also, so Rupert Grant is one of the few, um, like, of the the main cast who uh, he's like married and has a baby, like just recently. So oh. very like. Didn't he uh, marry Georgia Nicholson? Like that's mm-hmm. not her name, but she's the one who played Georgia Nicholson. <laughs> I can look it up. <gasps> I think Rupert Grant. Well, I, I had this revelation. Let's see. I think uh, yes. It. Mm-hmm. I like her. Me too. She reminds me of like Bridget Jones. Yeah, like a uh, yeah. Like she should have played Bridget Jones. She has a Bridget Jones vibe. I mean, well, that she makes me. Happy. Was like too young when they made the Bridget Jones movies, but yeah, I like her. She's funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Hey Tara, did you know that your name kind of sounds like the word tarot? Uh. <laughs> And speaking of tarot, there's a really cool shop called Tarot in Time that is so much more than just a shop. You are right. Tarot in Time is a tarot and astrology service with a brick and mortar store located in Kent, Connecticut for all your metaphysical, herbal and tarot needs. Their herbal and holistic approach to tarot and astrology is extremely welcoming. Their website includes videos of each reader so you can find the right match for you. And they offer in-person or distanced via Zoom tarot and astrology readings. Prices are very reasonable, starting at $20 for a 15-minute reading. I've had multiple readings from Tarot and Time, both in person and online. When I was in the U.S., I've been in their actual shop. And when I've been here in France, I've been able to coordinate it fine doing the readings online. Yeah, I had one in person, uh, one in person reading, and it actually changed my mind about tarot readings. I wasn't a huge fan of them before, but after my reading with Mimi, I kind of changed my mind about it and I like them now. Yeah, so you can do easy booking online at tarotintime.com. That's T A R O T I N T H Y M E dot com. Hermione Granger. Hermione. She's got so first off, I didn't know she's older than all of them. They're 1980, pretty much all the characters, and she is September of 79. Oh. 9-19-79. And this is cool for me anyway. My birthday is 92989, and she's 91979. Ah, so we're the we're in the nine 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 club. Yeah, <laughs> and according to sources, she is mm-hmm. a Virgo Sun, Virgo Moon, Scorpio ascendant potentially. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I'm not against that. Yeah, um, I again with her, I'd say there's probably like fire 
in there perhaps, yeah. but with the Virgo, Virgo. Yeah. I definitely, I mean, Virgo, like, uh, she definitely gives me earthy vibes because she grounded mm-hmm. AF. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like even like Capricorn in there. Yes. Yes. Um, where I she's see. so like, we need to figure out what we're doing for our futures in the second book where they're like, they need to pick their classes for their third year mm-hmm. where they get to choose. And she's like, this is going to affect everything we need yes. to yes. plan. Yes. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe she's, I don't know which order because I don't necessarily see her as a Capricorn moon. Mm-hmm. I would see her more as a Capricorn with a Virgo moon. Yeah. Or she could be Capricorn a Virgo in there somewhere. Yeah, just Capricorn, like, yeah, in her chart. Um, or maybe Capricorn, maybe Capricorn ascendant, because that's very like yeah. coming across as capable and mm-hmm. being like, you know, your main like personality and the way you see things being ruled by Saturn. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also like can see a little bit like um, just thinking Scorpio eyes, you know, a Scorpio ascendant and uh, and mm-hmm. being really like direct and. I think that in the books, you know, everyone was, well, I don't know that a Scorpio would would be that like, she was pretty, um, what's the word? Like she wasn't shy, you know, she was pretty direct Mm -hmm. right away. Um, Mm -hmm. which I don't know if a Scorpio moon would be pretty direct right away. I feel like they they would kind of like feel out the situation and then come on in, but Mm -hmm. At the same time, like she came across as a little bit too abrasive for some of them because she was so like leading with the facts and leading with all of that. So that maybe that's more Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also funny um, how she's she's such a rule follower, but then at the same time, like she'll break the rules where like, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I keep referring to things from the second book because I'm just currently reading that, but she, they're brewing the polyjuice potion, which is like, they shouldn't be doing this anyway. They got the potion from a restricted book. She stole ingredients out of Snape's office to make it. And then when it comes down to that, they need to like put the hairs into the potion harry and ron are like how are we supposed to do that and she's like fine i brewed this whole thing for nothing and you guys like won't even steal their hairs (laughs) it's like you don't want to do this now like we've done this whole thing we're not going to do it now and it's like wow hermione it's so funny you would think like she's such a rule follower and yeah wants to do everything the right way but then at the same time she's like well no we put all this effort into this and now we're not going to follow through I feel like, oh, I love that. That's such a good point to bring up because it's kind of like, I mean, I relate to that in some ways because I'm Mm -hmm. like, I'm a rule follower, but if the rules are stupid, then whatever. But also Mm -hmm. like, but I would really need to have like weighed my options of, is this something that is Mm -hmm. worth breaking the rules? Yes. Um, But I feel like even then, I don't know that I would be stealing things and- to brew apologies yeah. potion like, yeah, like i don't think does i could some questionable things yeah i, I couldn't you freaking imagine sneaking into snape like getting caught in snape's office stealing his crap you know and also like having I the, couldn't do that. the awareness as like a 12 year old being yeah. like everybody trusts me they will not suspect me you know <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. What sign would do that? Is that like a secretive like Scorpio? Is that a it seems reckless a little Sagittarius? It's is not a Sagittarius. That... A Sagittarius couldn't but... do that and, and get away with it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Or is it a, just a meticulous Virgo that can a secretive Virgo, you know? I Maybe kind of feel like the Virgo could mm-hmm. do that. I'm just thinking of mm-hmm. uh of like amazing uh friend Muna from the from the Virgo episode, I feel like she could be the mm-hmm. one, like, nobody would think it would be me. I'll do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Virgos and, and Scorpios also do share a lot of similar qualities. Like the meticulousness, um, just in different ways. Meticulous and and secretive. I think. Um, like not a need yeah. to get into all of the details with, well, they have all the details, but they don't need to get into it with other people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That so yeah, yeah, I mean, Virgo, Virgo, Scorpio. Okay. Or or maybe Capricorn. With Capricorns, Virgo, Capricorn, Scorpio. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Maybe she's so, like, maybe she's like a Capricorn Venus or something, you know, mm, mm-hmm. where that's like, that's hugely like Capricorn Venus are the ones that like age in reverse type of thing where they mm. get more like light and lovey as they get older, where okay. like they're a lot more serious about, especially things when it comes to like anything dealing with mm-hmm. Venus, you know, when they're yeah. younger. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. And Emma Watson is an airy sun, Sag moon, and Virgo ascendant. I love that. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, she, we talked about her airy season, how she has the Aries look. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. that she's a Virgo ascendant because she always looks put together AF as we discussed about Virgos. Like, you know, you've never seen Emma Watson look slovenly ever. Mm-hmm. And Sag Moon, just like, I don't know, that kind of for some reason makes me think of like the how she'll just like go hide books around places for people, mm. you know, mm-hmm. and how she mm-hmm. needed to go like, like school was so important to her, which is a very Hermione characteristic, but it's also like she did not need to go to university after all of this, but a Sag Moon, like to go to a, a, a different country for higher education that's the most Sag mm-hmm. Moon thing. Like, I I think that's, yeah. And also to yeah. be like, you know, she's very, um, don't um, put me in like that. Like, she's very like feminist feminist, which I appreciate and mm-hmm. very like, um, don't put me in this category of whatever. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that's very Sag Moon of being like, I deserve my freedom just as much as a man does, which is obviously duh, but I feel like it would be like a Sag Moon person to, to kind of like voice that and an Aries to voice it like in your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. And then like kind of pulling in that Virgo ascendant for the Virgo character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) I just looked at the next one on our list. Tara made this list and it says Dumbledore parentheses. What a fucking mess. <laughs> I don't mean the character Dumbledore, which he is. Yeah. No. <laughs> but really it was so JK was she's so weird, but like she'll give character birthdays, like very specific birthdays for so, a lot of characters. Yeah. But she didn't for Dumbledore and then she gave a whole bunch of other like random information that really didn't make sense regarding when he was born yeah so (laughs) So first it was said that (laughs) he was born in 1881 okay sure but then in 2001 she said he was 150 years old when he died in 1996 hashtag bad math hashtag bad math which, so he couldn't have been born in 1881, but she gave the year 1881. Let's assume he was born in 1881. We don't know when he was born in 1881. It is weird how she's so specific about certain characters and so freaking vague you know, about other ones. Like, yeah, she, I think she's really bad with numbers because like people have asked like, how many kids go to Hogwarts? And she was like, there's like a thousand. But I think she just throws numbers out there because people like narrowed it down. They were like, that means there's like 10 kids in each, like the the way they've, (laughs) because people were trying to figure out like how many kids would go to Hogwarts. And I I don't know. It was just like me feels that I feel like I could do, I could, I could just be like, yeah, like a a thousand. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I think if it were, I, (laughs) I don't know, stupid stuff like that. And I don't know what part of my chart it is that does that. I would have like figured it out. Like, okay, it's there's this Virgo many Mercury. kinds of, yeah, there's this many <laughs> classes, different subjects. There's this many houses. There's this many years. Normally two houses are in a class together. Yeah. Multiply it and figure it out. There's got to yeah. be like more than a thousand, I think. Yeah. But she's like, yeah, number. Yeah. Number here. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, so yeah, bad at math, but we're going to guess that he's born in 1881. And it said somewhere that he was still 17 in June of 1881. Mm -hmm. 
And then by the time he meets Grindelwald, he turns 18 and it's, it's written somewhere that he meets him in the summer. Yeah. That when he turns. So, so the Harry Potter fans deduced that probably he's born in the summer of 1881. Okay. Like which July or August, July or August. Um, So meaning cancer Leo Virgo. Yeah. I'm sorry if you can hear guest on the litter box right now. <laughs> <laughs> Digging with the little kitty paws. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a little kitty poo. Yeah, he had a little kitty poo. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to think about this. I had like, <laughs> I hadn't, <laughs> this is going to sound so dramatic. I was having an, like a deep conversation with Kiam when we were walking the cliffside in Normandy this summer. <laughs> As you do. Like we got into it. It was so good because like, you know, it's, I will have in-depth Zodiac conversations with Guillaume, but not in the same way that I do with you because he does it from such a logical perspective and we do it out of just like a love and like fascination. Mm -hmm. And we, we were talking about um, fantastic beasts or is that what it's called in English? Yeah. Okay. And like (laughs) animal fantastique and, um, (laughs) And so it's like, I, I just remember going into what could, like, what could he possibly be like Dumbledore and, and Guillaume had great insights. And of course I don't remember what they are now. And then I asked him like yesterday, or I'm like, do you, do you have any, you know, what, what, what was it that you said about Dumbledore? And he's like, oh yeah, I remember that conversation, but I have no idea like what I had said, but I feel like we kind of, when we did talk about it, like there definitely could be some Aquarius going on because you never fucking know what's going on with Dumbledore and, yeah. or like with, you know, like I said, with Uranus, you never know what's going on with planets there or sorry, with placements in that or wherever Uranus is, wherever Dumbledore's anus is. It's where where got, is Dumbledore's anus? I mean, does anyone know? Does anyone know? <laughs> oh my God. Um, he's he's got like that you know like a way of thinking that you're like where where did that even come from and i definitely think he's got that going on but i don't know that i would like yeah i'm good with him being an air sign but based on the information we have that's the one sign that he's that's the one sign that he's not (laughs) but that doesn't mean that he can't be like an air moon or yeah yeah, probably he's an air moon oh Um, flighty af (laughs) but like (sighs) But at the same time, like, I mean, maybe he could even be an Aquarius rising because mm-hmm. you're like, I don't know what to make of him, but he has a presence, you know, He's got a presence. And he is like weirdly caring, but like misplaced. Yeah. And like, I, I'm I not going to tell know. you about it till the end once. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, it's very weird. Yeah. I, I actually... A bad Harry Potter fan, and I've only seen the first Fantastic Beasts movie, and I didn't watch the second one, and I want to. I just never yeah, you did. Need to, yeah. So yeah, I know it goes a lot more into Dumbledore mm-hmm. in the second one. Um, yeah, and it's like it's very, um, you know, cryptic is the word for Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. but there's a plan behind it, mm-hmm. which I feel like could be an Aquarius moon. Because I'm thinking of my mom always has a reason behind the thing she's doing, but she's not going to share it always. But it's mm-hmm. also going to be weird. And you're like, where did that come from? Yeah. And maybe an Aquarius moon. I do not think. I was going to say, I don't think he could be a cancer, but I don't, I, I don't think he could be a cancer. I don't think he could. I, but he's mm. also so capable and like so. I mean, he's he's the greatest wizard of all time, you know, like this Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> What's he say? Is the most powerful wizard in all the world. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh, I can't remember the line. But yes, I know what you're saying. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And like, I mean, what who could defeat the worst, most powerful wizard of all time, you know, like mm-hmm. and also. Could a cancer like have like hit one of his friends who then maybe became more than a friend and then have to fight him and defeat him? Like, 
if you've got an Aquarius moon, yes, but I don't know about, mm. I don't know that well, a cancer could. What if he's, what if he's a Leo? Yeah. Right. I feel like him and Harry he's got a have presence. that, that yeah. connection over being yeah. Leos, right? Yeah. Let's say he's a Leo. Okay. Aquarius moon. Um, yeah, because he's definitely not mutable. No. Like he, he's one of those, like, um, I'm just thinking of like a, a family member, um, on my dad's side, who's a Taurus who like is one of those chill Tauruses that you wouldn't really think of as being stubborn, but like, they're not doing it if they don't want to do it type mm-hmm. of things. And I feel like that's kind of like Dumbledore where you're like, he doesn't seem to be like, it's my way or the highway, but he's not doing what you want to do. He's doing what he mm-hmm. wants to do, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, which would be fixed sun, fixed moon, but also like Leos do have huge hearts, but, but mm-hmm. also an Aquarius moon would have, would have that detached ability mm-hmm. where, and almost like be surprised at the affection that they have for someone like he does care about Harry, but he also is like, but this is what needs to be done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another fun way to look at it is um, we can do his Chinese zodiac. We know he is a snake. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that we know for sure based on 1881, summertime. You and Dumbledore getting in my little horsey hoof way. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are the other, the other, what's 18, uh, 1980? The rest of know. them are 1980, except for, uh, I know, right? Like our Chinese zodiac is so lacking. Chinese zodiac knowledge. Yeah. 1980 I mean, Chinese zodiac. The monkey. And hmm. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I put, I put 1908. Hmm. Chinese. Oh, it's the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and then those two. I don't even know what comes before the monkey. Chinese. The goat is 1971. So they're all a bunch of monkeys. Wait, and 1979. Is the goat okay? Yeah, so that's that's uh Hermione. Hermione. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I could totally see her being a goat versus them being monkeys, and her just being like, guys, <laughs> I'm surrounded by monkeys. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. And then, oh, interesting. Both of the actors who play Dumbledore are Libras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Richard Harris and Michael Gambon, both Libras. I definitely get a Libra. They're they're the two different types of Libras. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. the first one is the one that's just like it's like a you type of Libra. Like they're pretty I'm chill. The, I'm the Richard Harris. Libra, You're the Richard Harris. I prefer him. And then there's did you put your name in the goblet of fire, Libra? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Oh my god. I saw one of those things where it was like name a movie plot, whatever that could, that like the, the movie would have ended in the first five minutes had the characters behaved logically. And it was like, Harry, did you put your name in the goblet of fire? No. Okay. So being as (laughs) like um, Voldemort's back and definitely out to get you. And this is a very hard thing, uh, enchantment to break. Probably someone did this to put your life in danger. So being as you know oh but but it, but but sir it's a it's a magical contract yes but you're not of legal age to sign a magical contract so <laughs> null void and we're gonna look into this because probably someone's out to get you oh thanks so much professor and you know like <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah there's so many things like that in harry potter where it's like you know if, I love- if everyone would have just like done what they should have done yes and i love like how we'd be like fine right now <laughs> the summary of the harry potter books where it's like dumbledore says ah i should have told you this <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> oh, oh my gosh but anyways yeah you're definitely the richard harris libra and then <laughs> some of the wacky libras out there the michael gambon libra where they're just like life of the party libra um yes Okay, so I like that though. I like that they both have the Libra E, you know, presence because I feel like it's it's pretty neutral in a way where they can take on the other characters' mm-hmm. roles. Um, but I do think book Dumbledore and and what we see of Dumbledore in the second Fantastic Beasts is got got Aquarius going on. 
and I can see the Leo. I can see the Leo where, I mean, might I add my, my own personal take on this, where we were trying to figure out who could, which sign if they had to fight someone that they loved and like defeat them. Mm -hmm. I could do it. You could do it. I could do it. So perhaps he's got Libra in there. Oh, keeping that balance, like needing to, mm, mm, mm. Tara. <laughs> yeah, I th- yeah. Interesting. That's such an air point. I'm like, air point. I, don't, I mean, I'm thinking of the circumstance. And for me, it would completely depend on the circumstance. I mean, for everyone, oh, it for would sure. depend on the circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I'm going to fight you. No, but like, I think yeah, it would well, depend on you know. everything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Okay. So maybe he does have that little bit of Libra going on. Mm. He, uh, yeah, he's an enigma. I like, I feel like we could do a Dumbledore episode mm. <laughs> and go yeah. through like, what are all of the things that would make him, him, what houses would they be? And what, like, you know, um, he's got, I mean, he's very smart, like, so, so mm-hmm. smart, but I really think there's Aquarius going on because of that, because it's smart in a way where you're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like, where, how did you even like get that, you know? And mm-hmm. anyways, okay. Yeah. Shall we move on to he who must not be named? Please do. Okay. So according to sources again, Voldemort. Well, we um, actually have Voldemort's birthday. Yeah. He's a, um, oh, yeah, yeah, December, December 31st. 31st. Um, uh, 1926. Okay. I also like, like J.K. Rowling put a lot of French in the books and like Voldemort. I now mm-hmm. like it's in French, Voldemort, you know, it just means <laughs> flight of death. And, and it's literally like vol de of. More, which is death. Oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. So please, we all know Tom Marvolo Riddle oh. is an anagram for I am Lord Voldemort. Yes. What is, because it wouldn't work in French, what is his name in the French books? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to look it up so I say it correctly, but I know exactly what it is because it's fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you have to, when you rearrange the letters of... Uh, Tom Marvolo Riddle. It's I am Lord Voldemort. So in order for yeah, it to I say, am. yeah, mm-hmm. je suis Voldemort. Mm-hmm. They don't have the Lord part in it. Je suis Voldemort. His name is Tom Elvis Judasor. <laughs> <laughs> I love his middle name is Elvis. Voldemort's middle name is Elvis in French, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you didn't know that, but. Oh my God. Hilarious. I I'd just... love to know his name in other languages. I've too. looked it up yeah. before. It's pretty funny. Yeah. 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 That's a fun thing. Like to what look is up. it like in Spanish or. Uh... Okay. Um, I don't know what else. In other I don't know languages. if it'll be as good as Elvis, but. It's pretty. Um, well, we have French, German, Spanish. Uh, okay. In Spanish, it's Tom Sorvolo Riedel, like R-Y-D-D-L-E. So Sorvolo, because it's soy okay. Lord Voldemort. Yeah. Um, Tom it must have been fun Elvis trying to. Uh, yeah. yeah. Making yeah. up the names in all the different languages. And in German, it's Tom v- Vorlost Riddle for first Lord Voldemort. Okay. Um, Elvis is the best. Elvis is the best. Je suis Voldemort. Tom Elvis Judasor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so Voldemort is a Capricorn with a Scorpio moon and an Aries ascendant. Yes. And in the Patreon episode where we talked about Sirius and James, and we were trying to figure out like if Sirius did have those like Scorpio qualities that he apparently like has as a birthday, we Mm -hmm. were saying how, you know, we were going back and forth on that and basically trying to think of a Scorpio. Would they be able to like, just kind of give up on the revenge they were trying to get. And it came Mm -hmm. down to a Scorpio moon never could. 
Mm. And Voldemort apparently has a Scorpio moon. So Mm -hmm. I think it comes back to that. I can see that. I think that this one works. It, I, I think it can work. And like yeah. the a Capricorn that grew up that way, just mm-hmm. thinking about like gaining any and all power, mm-hmm. like, yes, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't just have to be business brain, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like I want status and yeah. I want respect mm-hmm. and, and a Scorpio moon, like. I'm going to hunt down every last one of you that even whispered about betraying me. <laughs> Lucius, you know, you thought about it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can definitely see the Capricorn sun, Scorpio moon. Um, and he had a fucked up, like everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going over this, it like brought back memories, of, you know, learning certain things in the book. And I completely forgot about his like really messed up uh, family history. Yeah. And um, it's dark and twisted. Yeah. And, you know, created a dark and twisted human. And to have um, a Capricorn sun, Scorpio moon coming yeah. like where the, the, nurture part of your childhood was not there and just wanting to like and and like being in an orphanage like a and and just wanting to like have a status of you know Mm. and oh yeah I can definitely I mean I also feel like I always need to give a disclaimer you can be a Capricorn sun Scorpio moon and do all of these things in like the best possible way you could like save the world Mm -hmm. out of like a determination and like intenseness speaking of that the actor who plays Voldemort Ralph Fiennes Mm -hmm. who I hear is a very nice guy um, he is a Capricorn Sun Scorpio Moon. How freaking so, cool is that? Like, like how Daniel Radcliffe is, the, yes. you know, what Harry Potter is supposed to be. How cool. I mean, like, I'm sure they didn't seek out an actor that was the same no. sun and moon sign. Yeah. Maybe they did. Maybe there was some crazy Zodiac obsessed person. If they the were people like us. Yeah. Team. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, I think at this casting, we're only accepting Scorpio, uh, sorry, Capricorns. Mm -hmm. If you have a Scorpio (laughs) moon, you're at the front part of the line. Any others? Yeah, I think that's awesome that the the hero and the villain per se is like Mm -hmm. they're matching signs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's cool. But yeah, like like you said, um, you can be a Caps on Scorpio moon and not be Voldemort. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> but if you grow up in that way and with everything else going on, I mean, like no chart is going to make you a villain, but mm-hmm. if, but I would say certain charts would be more predisposed to um, mm-hmm. going that way. If you don't have the environment, depending on the environment that you grow up in nature, nurture, all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And I would say that he would be one that would, he would be, he must have something in there that is very charming as well, because, Mm. you know, he was able to charm people. He was able to like sweet talk, like, um, you know, uh, professor slughorn. He was able to, um, like have a a charisma Mm -hmm. in a way that would get those followers. Like which sign would you, would you, I would a lot of the things that I've been looking at is like my (laughs) my Gemini Mars because I've been like looking up a few charts of other people that also have Gemini Mars and it's always like witty charming blah 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 um a lot of times Gemini is Hmm. seen that way um but also I like Libra is very charming but maybe having um Mar but no he he couldn't he couldn't have Mars and Libra or Mars and Gemini like it would have to be more intense mm-hmm. than that. It would just have to be, but, but also it would having, have to be like his mercury that we're in. An mm. air, well, no, 
No. But it could um, be in an air house. That's another thing too. Like yes. um, mm-hmm. because I, I was doing um I was doing Julian Laura's charts and they both have their Mars in the third house, which is Gemini's house. And so it's so true that both of them, if they're ever like angry or like stubborn on something, it's like in such a funny, witty way, you know? Mm-hmm. So like um, I don't know, maybe like having your Mercury in in, in Gemini's house or something where okay. like being a sweet talker, uh, mm-hmm. but being charming to like a point where he was able to talk his way into and out of things and, yeah. um, and also gain a following like with like a manipulation tactic, but, but also making, making others feel so like, you know, like he found the, the, the Pettigrews, like he found mm-hmm. the, you know, whatever, like, but like the, the Malfoys, but found the, both of them in a way where it was like, I can see what you need for me to I, what you need me to make you feel in order mm-hmm. to join me. Like Malfoy has wanted to be like, this is the status. Like I'm important. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm so high up in this like great person's eyes. And then like the pedigrees of the world were like, you know, he trusted me, you know? Mm-hmm. So having that manipulation ability as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh man. That's it reminds a- me of um, our Capricorn guest who said Christy. she doesn't mind. She doesn't mind being called manipulative. She takes it as a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's a Capricorn. Yeah. So because it's like that mm-hmm. implies that I planned ahead. Thank you for, say- mm-hmm. for thinking. <laughs> <laughs> she was so funny. Oh, my God. She's so great. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess a Capricorn could manipulate. Yeah, and it, oh, it's so interesting that um, that Ralph finds is a Cap Sun Scorp Moon as well. Yeah, yeah, very, um, very interesting. Okay, all right. I feel like that went fast, but it was an hour. <laughs> it was more than an hour, actually. But yeah. yeah. So that's our Harry, our first Harry Potter our episode first Harry Potter that episode. will be available to all. We're going to have so um, many Harry Potter episodes in the future, guys. It's just, yeah, it's unavoidable. It is. Um, so on the Patreon episode, if you want to listen to that, if you want to head on over there, um, we're going to talk about Snape and Draco and Hagrid and McGonagall. Yeah. We're going to talk about them and then we... Sorry. And, to, and also Neville and Ginny. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Neville and Ginny. Yeah. Sorry. We forgot them. them off. Yes. But um, yeah, we're going to. We want, I want to have like a Weasley's a episode, a Marauder's episode, a Professor's uh, episode, a Death Eater's episode. You came uh, up with the idea of doing a Founder's episode. Oh, Founder's. Yeah. That was your idea. <laughs> Good idea, me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's going to be a bunch of other Harry Potter episodes because there has to be. There has and to be. And we know a lot of people that are into this are also into Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, and also like a what signs are in what house. Yes. Because we did research there. Yes. And there's some there, research. There was a correlation. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So head on over to Patreon if you want to listen to part two of this episode. Yeah, and as a little recap, because we know Sierra likes to recap. Sierra um, likes to recap. Wrap it up. I do. Um, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Ooh. Apparently a triple fire. We disagree. We can see the Leo going on, but definitely got some cancer vibes in there Mm -hmm. as well. for sure. For the for the positive and the negative of those qualities, you know, the we Mm -hmm. have like the caring and and. Uh, what like gung ho qualities, but we have the moody AF qualities too. Mm-hmm. Um, Daniel Radcliffe is a Leo. Uh, Ron is apparently Pisces Sun Virgo Moon. We're not too sure about the Virgo Moon. We can mm-hmm. see the Pisces, and he is much braver than uh, than the movies give him credit for, and much smarter than the movies give him credit for. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rupert Grint is a Virgo. And then Hermione, oh, just we need to say in French, it's Hermione. And I just think that's hilarious. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, Hermione. It's so funny because French usually makes things sound pretty. 
And not I feel like one. it doesn't work for that one. Not that one. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And Hermione. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. But anything that has an H that they just don't pronounce, it just, I mm-hmm. can't. Um, so Hermione is mm-hmm. apparently Virgo sun, Virgo moon, Scorpio ascendant. We could, we could agree with the Virgo sun, Virgo moon, but we think there's some Capricorn in there mm-hmm. and not sure about the Scorpio ascendant. But she can be um, she can be sneaky when she needs to be and she can break the mm-hmm. rules when she needs to be as much as she's a rule follower. She can also be a rule breaker. Good yeah. point. And then mm-hmm. Emma Watson is an Aries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tumbledore. Ugh. He's got a summer birthday, apparently. Um, mm-hmm. And of those options, we would deduce he would probs be a Leo and definitely has Aquarius going on. Most likely Aquarius moon because of those detached ways, but intelligent AF, but also like coming at things from a weird angle. Mm -hmm. And then both actors who played Dumbledore were Libras. And then Mm -hmm. Voldemort, Voldemort, ooh, Voldy, 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 is (laughs) uh, Capricorn Sun, Scorpio Moon. And so is the actor who plays him. Mm -hmm. So there we have it. Our first... Harry Potter episode. Let us know your thoughts too, because I do feel like we came in with the, if we had come in completely fresh with like not knowing any of what JK had said, I wonder what the conclusions we'd come to, you know? So Mm -hmm. let us know what your thoughts are. And speaking of where you can let us know your thoughts, we are on Instagram. We're on Facebook too. Um, But we're on Instagram at the stars made me podcast. You can find us there, comment on some things. We, I, I plan to do more Harry Potter polls in the future too, because these have been fun. And what else? What else do I need to say? Um, Patreon.com uh, mm-hmm. slash the stars made me do it. And you can find uh, part two on there. And thanks for all of your support via Patreon and not via Patreon. And we are so yeah. close to. I know it seems like a small number for like the uh, the big podcast out there, but like we're close to 200 people on Instagram and we yeah. have over 200 people on Facebook. So thank you guys. And, and feel free to, to tag and share, you know, that would mean a lot to us so that more people can find out about it because the more you tag and share, the more people get to see because of like all the algorithms and all that stuff online. So it would yes. mean a lot. Um, even if at this time, you know, you're not able to support via Patreon, but just tagging and sharing is very much appreciated. And, and we're, we're happy that we got to do this Harry Potter episode. Can you hear my stomach right now? I don't know. I've been talking. <laughs> Sorry. It's being so is it loud. Going loud. It's going <laughs> I will forever remember when you told me you were in the middle of a class and your stomach made the, the noise where it's like, oh, no, 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 Classic stomach sound. Oh, oh my sorry. gosh. Yes, that was all very informative. I'm f- sorry I followed that up with, did you hear my stomach? Well, would it even be <laughs> the stars made me do it <laughs> without some random ass comments from both of yeah, us? Yeah, really. So speaking of that... What is the reason we discussed Harry Potter today? The reason is our contest winner, Kate, chose it because the stars made her do it. (laughs) Ding. 